Upon entering the main courtyard of San Cristobal, you cannot help but notice the three flags that fly above. The flags of America and Puerto Rico are well known, but the third flag is the Burgundy Cross. It flies above this fort as a reminder of this island's long history under Spanish rule. The four large barracks located off the main plaza were constructed in 1771 and consist of two floors. Looking inside the vaulted rooms of the fort, one imagines what it would have been like to live and try to sleep as a soldier stationed here. One way to get to the upper level is by using a circular staircase on the south side of the fort. This takes you to the highest part of San Cristobal and was known as the Cavalier of San Miguel. We were surprised to find so few tourists in the fort. It was convenient for getting good pictures without needing to wait. The San Juan sun is hot and the constant wind from the Atlantic provides a little help, but make sure to bring your water bottle and your sunscreen. The Cavalier served as an observation deck and gave excellent views in all directions. Peering over the 18 to sometimes 25 feet thick walls, you get a good view of the Capitol building and Isla Verde to the east. Greater San Juan is in the distance, and the cruise ship and ferry terminals are located in the Bay of San Juan to the south. The courtyard below is massive, and one must imagine what it would look like filled with soldiers performing their drills. Looking at all this surface area, you also have to wonder, where would all the rain go? Well, they collected underneath the fort in cisterns. The entire fort has evidence of its design to transport water from higher levels down to the next until it's finally collected. This is a good use of runoff water, since there is no nearby river. Looking west from the Cavalier, you get a sweeping view of the community La Perla and of the lighthouse at San Felipe del Moro in the distance. Artillery tracks sit next to this not too architecturally pleasing World War II lookout tower. However, once inside, its efficient slot window design makes it easy to see how a soldier could view the eastern coastline the vast expanse of the Atlantic Ocean in the middle and the coastline to the west, all through one unobstructed window. The Spanish garitas, century boxes that punctuate the walls of old San Juan, while charming to view from the outside, don't provide that functional level of visibility from within. When traveling from level to level, you will frequently find tunnels with ramps. This made it much easier to move artillery carts from one level to another. Well, maybe not much easier. It was still done by human labor. Beasts of burden were not permitted in the fort. Why, you may wonder? Well, Remember how they collected their drinking water? The mortar balls, placed here in pyramid form for display, were excavated from the grounds around San Cristobal. These balls are hollow to allow them to be filled with explosive powder so that they could explode over the enemy or on impact. Here we continue on to our next fortress, San Felipe del Moro. Upon entering El Moro, we see a similar though smaller courtyard. And again, we see representations of what living quarters might have looked like for Spanish soldiers. We also see more artillery tracks 
where we can imagine cannons being swung around to fire on enemy ships. El Moro Fort has seen its share of action. In 1595, Sir Francis Drake failed in his attempt to attack El Moro. The gunners of El Moro thwarted Drake with their cannons and the use of a metal chain stretching across the entrance to the bay. This Moorish-inspired lighthouse was built in 1908 and replaced an earlier lighthouse which developed structural problems. Although seeing a few more tourists than we found at San Cristobal, there were no crowds. We were frequently the only people in the section, and getting good, unobstructed shots was easy. In 1598, the Duke of Cumberland overtook El Moro by land and occupied the fort for six months. Illness and dysentery forced the Duke to give up the El Moro, and the fort returned to Spanish control. However, this prompted Spain to build San Cristobal to defend the city from the east. When it was first constructed in 1539, El Moro was just a tower. The expansive fortress that we see today was modified several times, but it largely reflects the design of Spanish military fortifications of the latter 16th century. Later attacks from the Dutch and the British proved largely unsuccessful because of the extensive fortifications of San Juan. The fort is constructed with six major levels, and it is impressive to go down a few and be able to look up at the massive walls of the levels above you. Then turn around and look over the wall to the levels still below you. Outside the walls is a path that extends around the fort on two sides, and we will travel that path next. The Paseo del Moro Trail follows masonry defensive walls that once surrounded the entire city of Old San Juan. The construction of these walls began in 1630 and were completed around 1678. While walking along the trail, evidence of the maintenance performed on the walls of the city by the Park Service is apparent. The Paseo del Moro once served as the maintenance road for the west section of the city walls, but in 2001 it was designated as a National Recreational Trail. Placards like this one explain the importance of the wall and its gate back in the day when the gate served as the main entrance to the city. Next to the gate, you can see the blue and white crenellated mansion, home of the governors of Puerto Rico. While walking along the bottom of these massive stone walls, you can enjoy views across the bay and breezes from the Atlantic Ocean. All of this helps to provide a historical experience unlike any other. In the distance, you can see the famous Bacardi Rum Distillery. The trail skirts the city wall from San Juan Gate to the fort of San Felipe del Moro along the entrance to the San Juan Bay. Future plans include an entrance to the Paseo del Moro from El Moro Fort itself and a continuous trail to connect up to the Fort of San Cristobal. The better views are as you approach the fort. Once you get to the fort, you are actually too close to it to get a good look at it. Looking out to the ocean and to the bay, you see the line of boulders that have been deposited to help protect this corner of the island from the pounding Atlantic surf. Continuing on to the end of the paved trail, you once again get better views of the fort itself. A narrow dirt path allows you to go part way toward San Cristobal. The path, through dense vegetation, 
offers clearings with pretty views. While walking along the path, you will hear rustling in the snake plants beside you. It's probably the brethren of this little guy. Continuing along, we are soon provided with this lovely vista. When we get to the next clearing, we have a great view of the cemetery of Santa Maria Magdalena with La Perla and San Cristobal in the distance. This cemetery, more commonly known as the San Juan Cemetery, sits next to El Moro and overlooks the Atlantic Ocean. It is noted for its intricate tombstones and the circular neoclassical chapel dedicated to Mary Magdalene. The cemetery is also the final resting place for several famous Puerto Ricans. Please click the round button and subscribe to my channel. And tell me in the comments below, what do you find helpful in a travel log? Thanks for watching.